Texas, in Houston, called the Offshore Technologies Conference. There are over 90,000 people who attended there. And they're all kicking tires on some pieces of equipment that they're putting on the ocean floor, some pieces of equipment the size of this auditorium. And they're operating under amazingly hostile uh, conditions, and they're um, creating a essentially factory floors uh, on, on the Outer Continental Shelf. And I'm going to go over that really briefly. Um, the Genius factor is really high. You can go uh, push a straw 10,000 feet and then uh, down to the ocean bottom and another 40,000 feet out to a deposit and suck it up. It uh, it's, takes an amazing amount of uh, technology and um, there we are. So, uh, and I'm rolling ahead with this, right? So, uh, deep water fossil fuel technologies. So what happens after air guns hit the water? Um, fossil fuel development, uh, exploration and production involves a whole bunch of different phases in order to find it, to uh, figure out what, how productive it can be, stick the straws in the, in the ground, and pull product out, offload it, process it. It's a whole bunch of different steps. And each one of those steps has its risks, its liabilities, its uh, uh, and it's noise, which is what my specialty is. Um, the, the operating conditions are extreme. The wellhead pressure uh, of the BP oil disaster, first off, the hydrostatic pressure down there, how much the water pressure was uh, around five, uh, uh, 2,500 pounds per square inch, but the pressure at the wellhead was 13,000 pounds per square inch. Now to get an idea of how much pressure that is, your standard industrial uh, sandblaster, you hear them on bridges and things like that, that's about 300 pounds per square inch. And so uh, it's a lot of pressure. It's, that's one of the reasons why they can't just put their finger on, on a, a leaking oil well and, and plug it up. Uh, it's also not just oil, it's oil, brine, sand, gas, a whole mix of different things, and each one of those has their own uh, characteristic noise, character, uh, noise characteristics and liabilities. That's what happened down there is they had what was called a gas kick. Uh, lost control of the wellhead. Um, the uh, temperature is particularly high, 200 degrees centigrade is not uncommon. The air gun thing, which has ca captured everybody's imagination, of course, is problematic. This is a fairly small one. Lamont Doherty um, does a lot of these scientific uh, uh, geological studies. Um, these are pretty small. This one here would maybe be a 1,200 cubic inch gun. It's something that might be used to actually locate the site. Wind farms, for example, see where it's, it's, it's logical to do that. The actual uh, uh, ones that they're using for the deep water are significantly larger. There's uh, 6,000 uh, cubic inch. This is a Sydney Harbor, uh, 10 kilometer trawls, uh, these huge devices, and they basically set up these uh, surveys. When they're first looking for oil and gas, they'll essentially uh, block out the areas where they're going to find it, and once they've located it, and they start production, they continue with the surveys. So the surveys don't stop when they start uh, pumping oil out of the ground. They go on around the clock. They do quarterly surveys uh, around the clock, 24 hours a day, week after week. And you can hear these uh, air guns, uh, in some cases, two and 3,000 miles away from, from the origin. So it's this pulsing. Uh, when they're close, it's a pulse, uh, as you can imagine, explosion. But when you get into the far field, you have what's called multipath, and you basically get this roar. Another problem uh, is when you get these rigs out there, I said they're not, they're not built up on these arbors and not platforms that, in, the, in the traditional sense. They have these uh, floating platforms that are stabilized by these thrusters, these huge propellers that are constantly spinning. The more hostile the sea surface is, the more these things roar as well. It, they have anywhere from six to eight uh, thrusters on one of these platforms. It's like having six to eight mid-sized uh, cargo ships all in that same location. And these thrusters are designed for high torque, and so they're not particularly quiet. They cavitate. That's why you saw that kind of foam around the, uh, the skirt of that, uh, uh, that platform. As I say, they don't stick a straw in the, in the sea bottom and pull out oil. They have these different materials, sand, brine, drilling muds, and they have to separate that. And they're separating that, again, at very high pressures. They were from 5,000 to up to 20,000 pounds per square inch. Not a, not a formula for quiet. And each of these pieces of equipment also have acoustical modems that are basically announcing what their, the, the, their conditions are, they're constantly pulsing away. That's to give you know, navigation cues to auto, autonomous vessels that are servicing these things in the water. These are 
essentially acoustical modems that are operating between 20 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz, which is essentially the biosonar range of marine mammals, um, of uh, dolphins and porpoises, also vocalization range of, of many seals. So uh, they're creating this kind of screechy, what if I can get this to screech for us? The sound guy turned it down. But the dolphins and porpoises can't turn it down. Just, let's put it that way. <laughs> so, you know, this is this is problematic. They're creating these huge sound fields down there at the bottom of the ocean. And uh, and just to remind you, these are factory floors. This is what happens after the air guns find the oil. And